On January 18, 2021, China's National Bureau of Statistics released data on China's economic development in 2020. The data shows that China's real estate sector has been snowballing in the past 20 years. Compared to 20 years ago, the weight of the real estate sector in China's GDP rose 78%. Housing price income ratio refers to the ratio of the average home price to the average annual household income. According to China's national housing price statistics for 2020, mainland China ranks first among the world's top economies regarding housing price to income, with a value close to 30. In other words, it takes a Chinese household 30 years without eating or drinking to afford a home. So, is there a significant bubble in China's real estate sector? Why is the price of housing in China so high? Let's start with a case study of the China Evergrande Group. It is the most heavily indebted real estate developer in China today and one of China's largest borrowers in the international market. Perhaps this case will help shed light on China's real estate sector. In September 2020, the news of Evergrande Group's huge debts surfaced. Since then, despite the Chinese government's attempts to intervene, Evergrande's debt crisis has still not shown any signs of relief. It is becoming a hot potato for the Chinese government. Evergrande Group, headquartered in Shenzhen, Guangdong Province, is a massive conglomerate whose core business is real estate development. In the rankings of China's property developers, Evergrande Group ranks first in size in 2020 and second in 2021. Evergrande's real estate projects span more than 200 cities in China, in addition to developing new energy vehicles, tourism, sports, finance, health, and retirement businesses. Evergrande Group entered the Fortune Global 500 in 2016 and ranked 152nd in 2020. It employs 200,000 staff and provides 38 million jobs across China. According to the performance report released by Evergrande Group on August 31, 2021, as of June 30, Evergrande's total liabilities reached 1.97 trillion RMB or 305.3 billion US dollars, close to a historical high. Evergrande admitted on August 31 that work on some of the group's real estate projects had been halted after delays in payments to suppliers and contractors. If the company cannot attract new investors to inject capital, it is likely to default on its debt. Evergrande's share price has fallen about 70% since 2021. Recently, at least two of the largest non-bank creditors demanded Evergrande to immediately repay some of its loans. After this news broke, all of Evergrande's real estate bonds and stocks plunged on September 3. On that day, Evergrande bonds were temporarily suspended during the day due to a drop of more than 20%. Why would such a huge real estate enterprise suddenly have a debt crisis? It is necessary to go back to a year ago. The Chinese government was worried about the enormous financial impact of the real estate bubble. On August 30, 2020, China's Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development and the People's Bank of China met with 12 real estate companies to establish new financing rules for Chinese real estate companies. These rules set out three red lines for debt control. Evergrande's asset liability ratio is 82%, the net debt ratio is 199%, and cash short-term debt ratio is 0.4 times, which all touches the three red lines, making it difficult to obtain financing from banks and other financial institutions. On September 24, 2020, a bailout report said to be issued by Evergrande to the Guangdong provincial government titled, report on Evergrande's request for support for major asset restructuring projects was circulated on websites in mainland China. The report stated that Evergrande's interest-bearing liabilities amounted to US $835.5 billion. They involve 128 banking financial institutions and 121 non-banking financial institutions. Although Evergrande denied the report, it did not gain the market's trust, and the bond prices of Evergrande Real Estate Group generally dropped the next day. On July 13, 2021, a court in Jiangsu Province approved a pre-litigation property preservation application by a bank in China, ruling to freeze the bank deposits of Evergrande Real Estate Group and one of its subsidiaries, totaling RMB 132 million, or roughly 20 million US dollars. How did Evergrande's debt crisis come about? 
The Chinese media revealed that the real estate company once had a powerful ability to raise funds. It was this ability that supported Evergrande to spend money faster and faster. However, after the Chinese regulators set the red lines, it lost the ability to continue to raise money on a large scale. Thus, its debt problem started to surface. On August 19, the heads of relevant departments of the People's Bank of China and the Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission met with executives of Evergrande Group and stressed the need for it to actively eliminate its debt risks. Reuters said there are already clear signs that the Chinese government is trying to avoid the severe consequences that a hard landing of Evergrande Group could have, and they are very concerned that Evergrande's bankruptcy could trigger a chain reaction in China's financial system. Reuters adds that sources familiar with the matter have revealed that the banks involved have been instructed by their higher-ups to extend Evergrande Group's maturing loans. Bloomberg's analysis points out that the Evergrande Group involves the employment of many people. If it collapses, it will not only deal a heavy blow to the banking and financial system, but also to China's job market. The Chinese media reported that the Guangdong provincial government, where the headquarters of Evergrande Group is located, has begun to consult with Evergrande's major bond banks to study whether it is necessary to establish Evergrande's creditor committee to make necessary preparations for Evergrande's bankruptcy. There is also news that the Guangdong government has also asked a state enterprise to suspend its acquisition of Evergrande's headquarters in Hong Kong. So, can the Chinese government, creditors, investors, suppliers and banks find a way out in the face of Evergrande's financial plight? It looks like it is going to be difficult. <laughs> Facing the bankruptcy problem of a substantial real estate enterprise like Evergrande, the government usually has two approaches. The first is to perform bankruptcy restructuring, selling assets at a low price and partially repaying investors. The second is that the government injects capital and temporarily nationalizes the entity to ensure the security of the financial system. The first approach, bankruptcy restructuring, as mentioned above, will undoubtedly have a massive impact on China's financial system and the job market. So, is the second option of government capital injection feasible? First of all, the Chinese government has been in a financial crunch in recent years. Whether it is worthwhile to bankroll such a large debt hole requires careful consideration. What is more damning is that injecting capital cannot solve the root problems faced by the real estate giant. Evergrande's debt problem is a mirror image of China's real estate industry. In addition to the excessive speed of financing, the underlying problem of Evergrande's debt problem is the high cost of land in China. In mainland China, 40 to 60 percent of real estate price is the land transfer fee and various taxes collected by the Chinese government at all levels. The debt raised by Evergrande is also loans to purchase land from local governments to build buildings. If the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, were to return a big chunk of the massive land transfer charges to real estate developers so that they could sell homes to the public at lower prices, not only would real estate companies be under less pressure to operate, but the Chinese public could also benefit. However, in reality, this is unlikely to happen. Radio Free Asia reports that the revenue from land sales in all Chinese cities in 2020 amounted to 8.4 trillion RMB, accounting for 44% of national revenue and 84% of local finance, another record high compared to the high of 40.3% of national revenue from land sales in 2019. However, China has been financially strapped lately. According to a simple algorithm, which uses the difference between national and local tax revenues minus general public expenditures to project the shortfall or surplus of each jurisdiction's fiscal revenue and expenditure, only Shanghai had a surplus value of only 94.26 billion RMB, or about 14.5 billion US dollars, in the first half of 2021, according to China's fiscal overview. China's economic recovery is being hampered by the deterioration of U.S.-China relations, floods, outbreaks, and the Communist Party's zero-COVID policy. Against such a backdrop, the Chinese government at all levels is expected to become more dependent on the land economy and is unlikely to be willing to lower land prices. 
Some financial analysts in mainland China warn that local governments at all levels are expected to have problems operating normally if they stop selling land. That is to say, without lowering land prices, even if the Chinese government injects capital to fill the debt hole of Evergrande Group, it will be challenging to put this real estate giant back on the track of a healthy cycle. In China's real estate chain, the government, developers, banks, and the masses are already profoundly entangled. Many real estate companies rely on debt for investment, and most Chinese people rely on bank loans to buy their homes. If they are unable to repay their loans, the real estate chain will break, directly threatening the financial stability of China and even resulting in economic collapse and social unrest. The Chinese government has recognized that there was a grave real estate bubble or crisis in sight. In order to curb the bubble, in August 2020, in addition to the three red lines drawn by China's regulatory body, eight departments, including China's Housing Construction Department, jointly issued a notice. The plan is to spend three years controlling all aspects of China's real estate industry, from development, sales, leasing to property management. Imposing an administrative intervention of the real estate industry and forming a complete set of closed-loop management measures. Since then, China's first-tier cities have introduced relevant policies to suppress real estate prices. However, if China's housing prices fall too quickly, various economic and social crises will emerge quickly. Therefore, on August 18, 2021, the CCP media, the Economic Daily, published an article saying. Preventing house prices from falling too fast will also be one of the directions of real estate regulation and control policies. On August 22, the Beijing Youth Daily published an article stating that housing is crucial to achieving the goal of common prosperity. It was stressed that big fluctuations in housing prices are not conducive to financial coordination and national financial security. However, no matter how many regulatory rules the Chinese government sets for real estate, if land prices do not fall, these rules will hardly have a real effect on stabilizing China's real estate market. Nor will they have a real influence on housing prices. Commenting on the land price issue, a Chinese internet user wrote, "How can the price of bread go down when the price of flour is soaring?" In addition, more regulatory rules mean that real estate companies will need to pay more fees to various government departments, and these added costs will eventually be passed on to the home buyers, the Chinese people. A few economists in mainland China have recently called on the real estate industry to trade time for space. That is, if housing prices in mainland China can remain relatively stable for the next ten years, but the income of residents and the economy are growing, such gradual development might possibly absorb the inflated housing prices. In other words, it will take ten years to reach a level where people's income matches the current house prices, so that the inflated house prices can be absorbed. This is another way to admit that China's housing prices are monstrously high, and that the expected income growth of the population in ten years indicates the size of the bubble in the current real estate market. The real estate prices in China's first-tier cities have now far exceeded the people's affordability. The down payment for a new home often depletes the savings of several generations. High housing prices have inhibited the spending power in China, and the sluggishness of the consumer power market in China has also affected the growth of China's GDP. In recent years, the changing relationship between the U.S. and China, more foreign companies leaving China, and disasters such as outbreaks and floods have all contributed to China's uncertain economic recovery. Recent strict regulations in several industries have aggravated China's unemployment rate, which is now as high as 20 percent, increasing the probability of insolvency for home loans. Therefore, whether the CCP has a decade to resolve the real estate sector crisis safely is a big question.